Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Danny Wisentowski. Earlier this month in St. Louis, bundles of bicycle helmets suddenly appeared on street corners. The helmets were hung from light poles at pedestrian crossings on South Grand Boulevard, and they were accompanied by an official-looking document bearing something that looked, at first glance, like the city's official seal. Titled in large letters, it declared a public notice from the government of the city of St. Louis, and it read, As of October 2022, we hereby suggest that all pedestrians crossing any St. Louis street should wear helmets until further notice. And the public notice went on to say that the city would undertake a study in traffic violence. But in the meantime, it continued, please enjoy this complimentary helmet to wear while crossing the street. Okay, so at this point, if you're thinking maybe this wasn't a real public notice, you would be right. That official city seal, for instance, actually said concerned citizens of the city of St. Louis. Now, Sean Milford is a cyclist in St. Louis, and for years he has biked to his office downtown, and Sean is one of those concerned citizens behind the public notice and complimentary bike helmets, a kind of public prank. But it's one that's gotten a lot of people talking about our region's ongoing crisis of pedestrian deaths. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks, Danny. Thank you for having me. So, Sean, you were among the group that put up these signs and helmets, and so this was a prank, but it really was something more than that. Where did this idea come from? I think it really came out of just sort of brainstorming among a, a group of us. We we just wanted to draw attention to the recent and also not so recent spike in pedestrian and cyclist deaths that have been happening in the city. Um, it sort of seemed like the city was turning a blind eye. Um, and so we really just wanted to do something that we thought would grab the attention of the media or of city leaders. You know, I, I remember when, you know, the photos of these, uh, you know, kind of installations started coming up, the tweets and photos, and some people sounded generally wondering, you know, is, is this an actual city policy? Have we reached a point where the city's like, just wear helmets to cross the street? What reactions were you expecting? Um, honestly, I mean, I think it, it worked out pretty well uh, to to our expectations. I mean, I... Maybe it's a symptom of what we've seen from the city or lack of what we've seen from the city so far that people sort of might have might have viewed them as potentially a real reaction from the city. But, uh, you know, I think I think it 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 met our expectations. You know, people were talking about it and we're talking here. So I think that was really the goal. You know, it almost seems you know, some of this pointed satire that a lot of times when there are issues with pedestrians and people say, well, you know, they should just cross the street at a different place. Or, you know, it's the pedestrian's problem. It's on them. It's not on the cars. It's not on the streets. Is that kind of what point you were trying to play with here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I mean, honestly, you see a lot of that. You see uh, you see that in news stories. You see that in police reports. You know, a pedestrian was crossing in the middle of a block or something like that. And, you know, we sort of see that as victim blaming. And, you know, we think our streets should be safe places for everyone, you know, not just the cars, but pedestrians, cyclists, walkers, everybody. Now, now in this this public notice, you know, it's, it's one of those things where the more you read it, the more you feel like maybe this isn't a real release from the city of St. Louis. But there's a line in there that, that really has this kind of, again, a, a really pointed message. And it, it writes again in the voice of this city public notice that in a continued effort to be perceived as caring about traffic violence, we, the city, are considering studying the issue. What, what point you were trying to make there about the city uh, trying to to be perceived as caring about the issue. Uh, it sounds like there is a, a bit of a gap there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just seems like St. Louis is a city that loves to study things. You know, we have endless studies about everything. And, you know, we're tired of the studies. We want a plan and we want action. And so that that was sort of intended to kind of kind of press that button about, oh, well, we'll get around to studying it after we've 
you know, allocated some money, hired a company to study this, then maybe we can have a plan in a couple of years. But we really, we really want to see some action. Mm. Now, now, Sean, I should mention, you were not the sole, you know, uh, mind behind these installations, behind the public notices and the helmets. It was a number of other cyclists. Uh, what was that discussion with you and that group? What, what did you all experience that brought you to this similar place where you thought, let's, let's bring this public in a, in a new way? Yeah, it was definitely not not me. I can't take any credit for for the idea. But um, I think we just we're just a group of people that ride our bikes all over the place. You know, we commute to work on our bikes. We ride our bikes for recreation, um, and we'd been we've been seen in our neighborhoods. You know, just I I mean, I ride my bike to work, and every day I see people run lights. I see people roll through stop signs, um, not not follow traffic laws, and I've had close close encounters with cars. Lucky enough, I've never been hit by a car, but I think we just all sort of got together and we're sick of it. And we're sick of the lack of reaction from the city and we're sick of, you know, endless studies and we want action. Now, you know, on on that point, on reaction from the city, just a few days after those helmets and the signs appeared, Mayor Tishara Jones, the mayor of St. Louis City, published an op-ed in the Riverfront Times. And it didn't specifically mention your work, but it felt quite a bit like a a response to the feeling and the points you were making. And now that op-ed was titled, St. Louis Should Invest $40 $40 million for safer streets. And she was writing about how uh, we should be using federal funds from the American Rescue Plan to, to get those safer streets. And that included, though, conducting studies and, you know, community listening sessions. What did you make of Jones's point there, you know, bringing up more studies that you were kind of uh, poking uh, some fun at? But it also sounds like there's a lot we, we don't fully know about how actually to make these streets better. Yeah, I think it's great. I, I was really heartened to see Mayor Jones' um, piece in the Riverfront Times. I think it's great. I, you know, she mentioned a citywide plan. I think that's one of the things that we want to push for. You know, we don't need ward by ward solutions. We need a citywide solution. So that's great. Um, but I think also we can utilize existing organizations. You know, TrailNet and Great Rivers Greenway have a lot of data about which intersections are dangerous, which streets are dangerous. And so we don't need to replicate work that's already been done. I think we can go straight to the planning phase and try to implement uh, some of the best practices. You know, Sean, I, I'm curious, you know, you, you've been cycling for a number of years here in St. Louis. Have things gotten worse recently? Anecdotally, I've heard from you know, many people you know, who drive saying you know, things have, you know, people are more reckless, people are changing lanes, but you know, I think even before COVID, it would be hard to find someone who would extol the talents of the driving or the yeah. streets in any city. But, you know, does it feel worse for you? I don't know. And, and again, that's sort of a, a anecdotal, you know, person to person thing. But it, it definitely seems that it's it's reached a point where it's it's much less comfortable than it used to be. Mm-hmm. And it, it does seem like, you know, based on the data, I know we, we were talking anecdotally, but the numbers also show that, that things seem to be getting worse or, you know, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, Missouri, I think, hit a record in pedestrian deaths in 2020. Um, and uh, those numbers have remained quite high. And just, you know, this week, in, in about a 48-hour stretch between Sunday and Tuesday, uh, three people were killed in, in traffic. Uh, you know, there was a hit and run. There was a couple incidents, uh, you know, in, in the St. Louis region. A fourth person uh, was initially reported as, as having died, but, you know, is, is in some kind of critical life uh, you know, critical situation. Um, when we have these spikes, when we, these things get, you know, shown to us and everyone is suddenly paying attention, what would you want people to think about in these moments um, and, and not to just let this pass them by? Yeah, I think these, you know, these tragic events are a great opportunity to sort of galvanize support around making streets safer for everyone. You know, I, people should think about, you know, how they use streets, you know, walking with their kids to the park or riding their bikes or how the elderly use streets or people you know, going to school or going to the grocery store. And so I think these opportunities are are good times to come together as a community and say, hey, we don't need to put up with this. You know, we can really, as a community, we can ask for change and we can demand change from our leaders. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know there has been some work on some of these streets. There's been repaving. There's been uh, increased enforcement. Um, but w- what is missing from this conversation? And, and what you know, what pieces would actually show you that something is working? Um, yeah, like you said, there's there's been some progress, but it's it's we really need a multi pronged approach. There's no silver bullet to solving this issue. Um, you mentioned there's been repaving, but yeah, really better infrastructure, um, whether that's painted bike lanes, preferably protected bike lanes, uh, you know, curb bump outs, 
for pedestrians, raised crosswalks, street street diets, road diets. A lot of our roads are massively overbuilt and they don't see any anywhere near the amount of traffic that they were built for, so we can do something about that. Um, but also I think an education campaign, both educating cyclists and pedestrians on how to stay safe, but also educating drivers and the things that they can do to help make the streets safer for everyone. Sean Milford is a lawyer and cyclist in St. Louis. Sean, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Danny. This episode was produced by Emily Woodbury. Our audio engineer is Aaron Dorr, and our production intern is Avery Rogers. This episode was mixed and edited by Avery. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.